Well, welcome to 2021. Hopefully it's not going to be such a boring year locked at home as last year. Anyway, let's look at a couple of possibilities here. We're going to compare SQL cursors versus, um, well, let's call it table or while loops. So first of all, we're going to go off and build a typical cursor. So in this case, we're going to do a declare. We're going to declare our values into the cursor. And we're going to do something simple, like we're just going to get a list of the databases that are currently on the server. We're going to open the cursor. We do a fetch uh, next into um, all, all the usual stuff that you'd expect. And then a, a couple of statements like uh, while fetch status equals zero and then begin. And, and what I'm going to do is just print out the results of this. So the individual values that are being pushed into our cursor. So we're just going to print the database names basically. And I'm going to show you that this runs quite you know, normally as we'd expect, but it's not the preferred way of doing things in terms of cursors are considered to be a pretty much a bad thing these days. So just to keep an eye here, we've written down 11 lines of code to do this. So I'm just going to run it, go ahead, no problem. And, and I also want you to pay attention to the time on that. That took 1.225. So let's do this differently. So if I go ahead and say, I'm going to do the loop, but in this case, I'm going to do it in a different way. So I'm going to use a common table uh, language structure here. So I'm going to go and basically get my query first. I'm going to insert that into a temporary table. So I don't actually need anything for my temporary table. So I'm just going to go ahead, and insert the information directly. Uh, I'm then going to declare the value that I want. So in this case, uh, I'm going to create again my uh, names value, previously a database, but we'll use names in this case. We do a while exists, and this is going to allow me to loop through because what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove each row from my temporary table once I've finished looping through it. So what I'll do is I'll do my begin statement. I'll do the print, same as I had before. But first of all, in this case, I now need to set my names principle. So I'm now doing it inside the loop, but I only need to do it once, but it will, because the value will change each time. So this is where one of the differences between doing this with a cursor versus doing it this way is that you need to set it here because I'm collecting it here. And I'm going to do a delete from and where name equals and then the value. So I'm just going to remove the entry. Now there are other ways of doing this and I'll show you a little later another way of doing this. And then at the end of this, I'm going to drop the table because well, once I've finished running through it, I don't need the table anymore. So here you see the four rows affected and then we have the printout of each one and look at that time. It's not even a second. So that could be a discrepancy on the local client, but in general, I found that they tend to run much faster. So let's go to the next level. What if I want to use this to build a dynamic query? So I'm going to build a begin statement here or a begin to open up. I'm going to create a temporary table. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to populate that temporary table with my common table uh, environment query. So what we've got is just a, a simple table. It's going to have two columns. Uh, one's going to be the query and the other one's the identity. So just so we've got a row number. Uh, I'm going to varchar this out. So I'm going to build it up with 4000. Although realistically, I don't expect any of my databases to be named with 4000 characters. So I could massively reduce that and maybe keep it at 50. But for argument's sake, let's just leave it as is. I'm just going to do a select of all the databases on the system where the database is read only equals zero and where description status is also online. So this will now rule out any databases that are in read only mode and any databases that are offline or in other recovery states. Now I'm going to insert the data from my uh, common table. And this is where I need to make sure I've actually declared the name of my temporary table. So I'm going to declare uh, the SQL query as my temporary table name. I'm going to select into it. And this is where it gets a little bit trickier because we're going to build the statement that we're going to push in. And we can't do that in the regular way because I've got to basically encapsulate it. So you're going to see some funky um, marks here where we basically 
go in and out of that encapsulated state in order to push in the, the various arguments and stuff. So what we're doing is we're doing an if zero equals and then we're asking it whether or not we have access to the database and then we're dynamically inserting the name of the database into the query. And the same here. Now, what's gonna happen is we're gonna build up basically all of the queries that we want to run. Now, I could do this differently. I could say, okay, get, run this query in a loop first and then only the contents that are returned, we want to build the query out. But in this case, I'm gonna do the reverse because what we've got here is an if statement. So if it hits the database and it finds out that it does have access, it's not going to run. So I don't have a problem with the if. So I'm, I can quite happily say, you know what, go through every database on my system. I don't care because it's only going to be in effect if it's not matching that value. Equally, you may find other ways of doing this um, different. You might want to run that if statement first because you've got a particularly long running query. But frankly, if you've got a begin that is only triggered if something exists, then that shouldn't be a problem. So I like doing it this way. You may be different. And now what we're going to do is we're going to build the loop. So just like previously, we're going to do a while exists statement. And what we'll do is we'll now take the contents of our temporary table. We'll take the top row. So as long as there is a top row to take, we'll take the query from, and then the name of our temporary table, so SQL query. So as long as there is one row to return, then the begin statement will be true. So we can go ahead and say, okay, well, we select the top record. We will take the query value as from the query column. And then we'll populate that into our at SQL query. That at SQL query will then just, in this case, print. Normally you do something like exec at and then just run the whole. But in this case, we're just going to go, you know what? Let's just take it as is. And this is the other way I can do this. I can also do delete top one because it's going to be the same information that we just returned. And there we go. That's my, my full begin end. And here we have some 20 odd lines. And I can go ahead and hit that. And you can see I've built, dynamically built out my queries. So each row will return a, an individual statement to be run. Now, I'm going to just change that because I realize that should be a one in this case, not a zero. And there you go. So this can be done for building dynamic SQL queries just as easily. And again, you don't need to use cursors. So hopefully you found this useful. And if you did, you know what to do.